All right, so are we near the end times? We have all these signs everywhere. AI is being more prominent. Do you check everywhere? Like last year, ChatGPT wasn't that popular. 2022, ChatGPT wasn't that popular. But since AI is already like making this, uh, like it's more prominent everywhere. Everywhere you use AI, Google is using AI. Uh, AI is being integrated into into like robots and stuff like that that are uh, being autonomous autonomous robots and I see see videos where they're holding guns and you know the um, the end is near and I, I'm my honest thoughts I really think AI has something to do with the end times and the Antichrist but it's not just that I mean a lot of of evil everywhere is is more prominent nowadays to where it's disgusting right and it's people think oh people actually embrace it and people think oh it's 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 the future you have to embrace the future right but they have no idea where that where we're gonna go right they have no they have no idea where that's actually leading you know what i'm saying well, let me get the mic up a little higher there's the right one there you go <clears throat> Right, people don't know, have no idea where it leads, right? All this is hinting towards the return of Christ. John said in Revelation, when he got that revelation, he got the download of everything that's happening. Are you ready? Are you going to stay or are you, or are you going to make it? Have you repented? Have you turned to Christ? Because are you you really want to stay here and, and be present for, for, for the whole show? It's, it's not going to be really, it's not going to be pretty at all. It's, it's going to be pretty ugly. Everybody has to be prepared, whether we like it or not, whether we agree with what's happening or, or not, right? You can disagree with me on a, on a few things. You can disagree with me with whatever you want to disagree with, but you have to understand whether we like it or not. There is Jesus Christ that is going to come back. He's going to make his comeback. It's going to be majestic. It's going to be great. It'll be terrible for the ones that didn't repent. It'll be terrible for the ones that did not accept the gospel. But it'll be the day of salvation for those that did. Everybody was given this option. Everybody was given this opportunity. People decide to accept it or to deny it. Everybody was given the opportunity. <clears throat> There's not going to be one person that's that's going to say, well, I was never given the opportunity. Because God is, is fair. God is just. His word specifies that God is just right on on there's going to be basis on on what god is going to judge but since god is just and god is fair automatically his judgment is fair everybody was given the opportunity to repent everybody was given the opportunity to turn to jesus for the remission of their sins it's up to the person to decide that if they want to or not oh but this is the scary thing also people that have decided to do so People have fallen away, right? And that's the scary thing, right? The Bible, the Bible does say that in the end times, many will fall away. Many will give uh, heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, right? Doctrines that are not not scriptural, that are actually anti-scriptural. And we're seeing that with the, the woke community. We're seeing that with the, the Skittles community and, and all that stuff. You know, people are, are caving in. You know, they're saying, well, it's modern times, you know, um... We're, we're in modern times now, you know, uh, why, why do you, do you still believe in that, in that ancient book, <laughs> that ancient book proves to be true time and time again, all the time, right? Look at creation by itself. You really think that he created it by itself, you know, um, might sound very, uh, how do you say it? Very, very generalistic, but I mean, just, just the preciseness of how everything was made your eyeball i was driving the other day and i'm like wow how is it that an eyeball can perceive all these things how is it an, that an eyeball can perceive all these colors how is it that an eyeball can transmit the colors into your mind can transmit information to your mind and you actually think about it right you actually make sense of it right you don't think that if we didn't have a creator we would be just like floating amoebas like floating cells right I want to be grounded, <laughs> right? There wouldn't be assigned functions to the way that things work, right? It, it would just be totally random. Everything would be random. My thoughts would be random. Some thoughts are random, right? And everybody, right? But I'm saying like, how is the sun able to stay in place? 
if there wasn't a creator? How is it that the stars are not falling down and crushing us if, if it wasn't for a creator? Think about it. Even like, give me like 10 years, right? 10 years in a, in a span, like say like 10 years ago, right? In the span of 10 years, why, ha why haven't there been any stars that actually come and crush us or any stars that come? If, they're so, if the stars are very hot, as they say, they are, right? I'm not questioning that, but I'm saying like, why hasn't it happened that a, that a star draw near to the earth and scorch everything? Why isn't that a giant asteroid? There, I'm pretty sure there's millions of them bigger than the earth. How is it that a giant asteroid has not smashed the earth to pieces in the span of even 50 years, 100 years? You don't think that God's the one keeping it into place? You know, God has an appointed time for everything. The end is near, right? Where The end is near and God has an appointed time and, and everything that's going to happen is appointed on His timing, right? Um, it's going to be like the worst. The Bible talks about how it's going to be the worst time in history. Even from the creation of Adam to now, it'll be the tribulation will be the worst time. Whether I'm I'm pre-trib or post-trib, it doesn't matter. Um, I am pre-trib. I don't think we're gonna be here for the tribulation, although I have to do some research on that. I'm being honest. I don't know. I don't know a hundred percent on that. I have to do more studying and I have to do more reading on that. I have to do more research. But uh, I am pre-trib. I don't. Well, it, the Bible does say for the sake of the elect, you know that it, the, the days of tribulation will be shortened. But there will there will be people that that'll probably lose their heads. Um, after the the first the first uh, the first wave gets raptured right, or the first wave gets taken up into heaven with with Jesus right. Um, I think for the sake of the elect, I think that means the the second batch, the second batch of people that are actually going to stay because they were not converts right. They they didn't believe, they didn't repent. But they'll have another another opportunity. The Bible just talk about like another opportunity right. Um, but they'll most more than likely lose their heads. Um. In order to be saved, that's what the revelation says. Um, but the end is near, guys. A lot of a lot of this stuff, right? It's it's getting so obvious in in everything, everyday technology, just the way that technology is advancing. I'm not saying technology is bad, but technology is pointing at something that's that's bigger. You know, there's there's an agenda behind everything. The way that people are being indoctrinated, I think I think AI is trying to capture capture the reactions and the movements of people. The way they react to stressful situations, that's just like a, like an opinion. I'm not saying that's how it is, but I'm pretty sure that's what's happening, right? I, I feel like that's the agenda. You know, AI is is studying humanity. I'm not saying that AI is going to be the whole end game or anything, but I, um, I do think AI might have something to do with, with uh, might might have a, a big part to play in, in with the Antichrist. Who the Antichrist is, I have no idea yet. The Bible talks about that they'll be from Middle Eastern descent, uh, but you know, uh, until that time, you know, uh, there is a lot of signs that, and there are birth pains that are, that are, that are coming up, guys. You can feel the tension in the spirit. If you're spiritual, you can feel the, the spiritual tension. Sometimes, um, you know, people feel heavy around certain regions, guys. Around certain regions, things don't feel like they used to. If you're spiritual, you know what I'm talking about. You know, it doesn't feel, you know, it doesn't feel like years, years past to where, you know, it seemed more relaxed. Now you can feel the spiritual tension of a lot of things in a lot of regions. Right? So be wise. Tell people about Jesus. You know, you don't want anyone to, to be left behind. Because you don't want to be a part of that tribulation, right? If if it's pre-trip, right? Pre-trip, pre post-trip. I'm pre-trip. But I'm, I'm, I could convince, I could be convinced to be post-trip if, if I'm shown the, the research and the information. Or if I do some more studying on that, right? Uh, give me a second. Do me a favor, guys. Comment where you're watching from. Like the video. Subscribe. Share it with your friends. Share it on your feed. Share it on, on your group chats, Messenger, WhatsApp, wherever it is you're watching from. If you're watching in a replay, welcome. Comment where you're watching from. I want to hear where you're watching from. Where you're watching from South America. You're watching from Europe, England, America. I want to I know where you're watching from. That way I can tailor the, the content, right? And probably put some subtitles in the future.
But even then, guys, I mean, everything you see on the media also is is not necessarily going to be apocalyptic. I'm look when I talk about the end times. Yes, I'm referring to a little bit. Of, mic's in the way. Yes, I'm referring to a little bit of like a, apocalyptic kind of things. But it's it's um in the in the spiritual side of it, it, it won't be apocalyptic, right? In the natural realm. But in the spiritual realm, guys, I mean, all the all the, all the movies that are coming out is is trash. A lot of them, a lot of it, a lot of that content is, is trash, man. I mean, I'm not trying to be like, oh, you're you're being a paranoid, apocalyptic <laughs> preacher. <coughs> My bad, <clears throat> but it's it's obvious, guys, with the indoctrination that's that's being put in movies, bunch of homosexual stuff. Is I wasn't there. It's, it's more prominent now because you know the, the enemy's mad and the enemy's trying to, trying to you know indoctrinate and he's trying to keep as many people as many souls, with him. Because he doesn't want to burn burn alone, he wants you to burn with him, so he's he's gonna try to indoctrinate your families and try to, to lower your defenses spiritually. He's gonna try to lower your spiritual defenses. Now catch this, the enemy doesn't care if you serve him or not. It's not about like Satanism or you practice any witchcraft or you're like in the straight up occult. He does not care if you're participating in those things. But what he does care, what he was, what his goal is, is you not serve Jesus, is to block it, is to put a blockade, a blockage, hindrance and delay on your relationship with Jesus. He doesn't want you to follow Jesus as long as he can obstruct the path between you and Jesus. That's all he wants. He doesn't care if you serve him or not. He doesn't care if you're a Satanist. He doesn't care if if you're 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 a witch or a warlock or or santero, curandero, whatever. He doesn't care as long as you do not repent and turn to him. That's his goal. And if you have repented and, and if you turn to Jesus already, his goal is to. He can't snatch you out. The Word of God says in the Book of John, no one can snatch them out of His hand, but. People can fall away. People can fall away. Right. So that's that's a dangerous part. You know, you're already with Jesus, but it's it's our decision, right? It's our decision to to decide if we're gonna stay on the boat or we're gonna hop off or we're gonna hop off the plane, right? You don't lose your salvation, but you can forfeit it, which is terrifying, right? And when you forfeit your salvation, you have you have a reprobate mind pretty much. Right, so we're already in the end times. Stay strong, stay firm, evangelize, tell somebody about Jesus, tell them the whole gospel, right? Tell them the, don't 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 just say Jesus loves you because, and I spoke about this before. Obviously, Jesus loves everybody. God loves everybody, which is why He loves everybody as creation. I'm like He He made the creation, so He He has compassion on creation. He loves creation. He thinks you're adorable as His creation, but. Because of the curse of sin, he has to send Jesus to pay for your sins, right? God is a righteous God and he is a holy God, right? So without without the remission of sins, without the sacrifice of Christ, without the blood of the Lamb, without the renewal of the Spirit, without the regeneration of the Spirit by the Holy Spirit, you're not going to make it. Without, without, those, without those things, without the blood of the Lamb, Without the regeneration of the Holy Spirit, without the 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 adoption, without the spirit of adoption that dwells within within you, if you, if a person does not have the spirit of adoption within them, then they don't belong to God at all. And that's what it says in Romans eight. So, in the end times, it's, we got to be more prominent also as as believers to to spread the gospel. And it's very simple. I'm not preaching here to wow you. I'm not preaching here to to say, oh, you know, you sound so clever or Oh, that's deep, brother. You know, like those things are are have their have they have their own time, right? There's a time for that. There's a time for for deep revelation. There's a time to to speak on on clever things. Although Paul said that he came not with clever speech, but with power and demonstration. So that's usually what I rely on. I just rely on the Holy Spirit, you know, to to speak, right? And sometimes the words are not going to be clever. The words will not always be like, "Wow, oh." Did you catch that? Oh, I didn't think about it that way. You make so you make so much sense, brother. You know, I'm not about that. Like the way that I my preaching style is is straightforward, simple, and I'm here to relay the message that I feel God's leading me to relay. Right. So, 
the end is near guys the signs are everywhere guys the most obvious one is is media the media the movies the music that's coming out like you know back then when it when uh if before I, I converted and I came to the faith, you know, I, I saw secular music and I and I thought it was cool. You know, like all that filth that they would talk about in the music and, and the movies. I, I didn't see it as anything. You know, to me it was like it just went over my head. Like I didn't see it like like anything. In fact, I, I used to think I'm like, oh, this is culture, you know, people think this is cool, you know, this is what 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 makes you, you know, um cool and, and what really uh gives you status, you know, if you believe these things, you believe like the world, you know, you'll be cool like the world, but now that you, now that I become a believer and I got a different lens, now I'm like, that's filth. You know, that's 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 junk. It's 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 trash. It's trash. It's it's impurity. And and now because I have the Holy Spirit, you know, the Spirit of adoption, the Holy Spirit has adopted me and made me one of God's children. You know, I have the mind of Christ now, and and to me it's like, oh, like that's that's filth. You know, and you know, there's movies that I've seen when I was I was young, right? I was younger, and I I seen movies, you know, in the movie theater, right? Um, and then I wa I replay them again, and I wa I I watch them because I get bored, and I'm like, oh, let me let me play a movie, you know. Meanwhile, you know, during my past time, let me let me go ahead and, and put Netflix and, and put a movie, or or you know, I find an old DVD around and I, and I play the video, I play the movie. Guys, I I like now that that I can see in the spirit, like I catch a bunch of filth that was that was there blatantly there, right? There's a bunch of filth that was there and I didn't notice it, right? But it's not as as back then it was it was a little more subtle. Now it's like more obvious to where people are actually coming up with the agendas and making it more obvious, you know. Um, Satan is is overplaying his hand now to where he doesn't care. He he's going loud and go all out, you know, get loud, you know. That's pretty much what what the enemy's doing right now. You know, it's it's a desperate attempt to to, to normalize in the culture sin. He's trying to normalize sin in the culture and he's trying to make righteousness look weird and, and strange to where, you know, the people that live righteously are outcasts. You know, but it look, it doesn't matter if you have morals or not, if you don't have Jesus. If you don't have Jesus, you can be the nicest person in the world, you can be the most the the uh the most moral person in the world, but if you don't have Jesus, you're broke. That's what the Word of God says. And I'm not trying to put you down, but I'm trying to tell you the reality. You know, Jesus is the rock. When you have Jesus, morality comes from Him, from His Spirit, from the Holy Spirit. You know, He's the source of your morality because without Christ, your house is built on sand. You know, your moral the morality doesn't mean jack if Jesus is not part of it, right? So, in the end times, you want to have Jesus because He's the rock, supernatural power there's a bunch of perks right a bunch of perks that come with being one of one of one of his a, a child of god right so you got to be equipped you know uh as of lately uh in my local church you know where i've been preaching god has been equipping the, the 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 people there you know because the end is near the end is near and people need to have discernment they need to be able to see in the spirit navigate in the spirit i'm not talking about aspirate projection you know like don't don't misunderstand what i'm not saying Right. But I'm saying like like seeing the spirit as in like they can discern, you know, when, when it's the voice of Jesus leading them out, when it's the voice of Jesus talking to them, when when it's the voice of Jesus shepherding them, and when it's the voice of the enemy, you know, trying to sneak in through media, through through things that are that you might think, Oh well, like that's so evil, like it's not even funny. And then, you know, there'll be people that that even like you know, they they'll claim to be Christian and spiritual, but they'll say, Oh, that's too much, brother. I don't think that I don't think I, I think you missed it right there, you know. You know, uh it's, it's not all bad, you know, you can go in and watch the movie, you can go in and listen to this type of music every now and then, you know. Um, I don't want to get into this rabbit hole, but but people, that's how they justify, you know, drinking alcohol. I don't. I would never advocate for alcohol, right, um, or, or drinking alcohol. Back then, alcohol was used as medicine, and it even says in Ecclesiastes or Proverbs, you know, uh, when, when Paul would tell Timothy to, Timothy to drink a little bit of alcohol, he was referring to alcohol as, as medicinal. As medicinal, you know, he didn't mean it to do it recreationally. He meant it as medicinal, you know, because back then they didn't have filters for water. So whenever they would drink water, it would have a little bit of contamination in it. And what the wine, with the alcohol in the wine would cleanse out the stomach. In other words, it was medicinal. It's not right now. You, if, you, <laughs> if you take medicine, it's, it's medicinal, right? You can overdose on medicine. You can, people can over, over. Oh, I hope YouTube doesn't flag me for that. Oh, no. Um, <clears throat> people can, uh, yeah, uh, Dio. People can, um, 
How do I how do I put it? <laughs> not good. You know, people can use medicine and, and it not be good. Right? But um medicine is supposed to be medicinal, supposed to help you, but Nowadays, lukewarm Christians, they try to justify, you know, alcohol, drinking alcohol and saying, you know, Jesus turned water to wine. Yeah, but Jesus did not drink out of the wine. You know, he, he did not drink wine. Nowhere in the scriptures did he say that he drank wine. You know, um, the word also says, be not filled with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right. So be filled with the Holy Spirit, in these, especially in, the, in these last days, guys. Um, let me tell you all a little bit of, of personal experiences, guys. As of late, the Lord has has kept me up late at night, and um, he was he was demonstrating something, you know, through um, personal, you know, um, his experiences, right? Um, and I didn't understand. I'm like, Lord, why are you keeping me up late at night? And when I prayed about it, and I asked the Lord, I'm like, Lord, like why why? You know, like, I want to go to sleep. I want to wake up. I want to wake up early. I don't want to wake up late because I'm tired, right? And I, I, I felt the Lord give me this. And he was demonstrating to me, be alert. Be alert because like a thief, and his word says it, like a thief. Jesus said it in his word. Like a thief, I will show up. Like a thief, I will show up. And you have to be ready. If you are caught asleep, you will not make it. If you're caught asleep, the enemy was well. You're not gonna make it, you know. Stay spiritually awake, guys. In these last times, in the in the end of days, you know you don't want to fall asleep spiritually. That's one of the worst positions that you can you can be in spiritually asleep, right? Because you're not gonna perceive things, and and it's enemy's gonna sucker punch you. You know you don't want to get sucker punched by the devil. Stay spiritually awake, guys. Not woke. <laughs> Not woke. Woke is 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 the the agenda of the enemy, right? Don't don't be woke, but be awake spiritually. As a like, uh, ask the Lord to open your eyes. Ask the Lord to revive you, right? Revival is not an event to where you go to, and people will say, "Oh, you know, I'm going through a revival." You know, Amen. I'm not saying those things are bad at all. Don't don't hear what I'm not saying. But what I am saying is that revival, biblically speaking. The reality of a revival is revival in your life is when you yourself are, you know, you know, brought back to life and in your relationship with the Lord Jesus, you're you're spiritually perceptive. You're there's spiritual fruit that comes from it. You. It's not just, you know, I go to a revival and I come out, you know, I'm revived because I went to a revival. No. Is there fruit? Is there change? Is there, is there spirit? Is there fire in your spirit for the Lord? Are you on fire for the Lord? How, were you, how you, is your lamp filled with oil? That's another thing, guys. The ten foolish virgins, you know, five foolish virgins didn't have any oil, and they wanted to borrow oil from the other five virgins that were wise, right? And they went to go get oil. When they went to go get oil, they came back. They were gone. They were gone. They were gone, guys, because they didn't have any oil on their lamps. And indeed, in these last days, make sure your lamps are filled with oil. Be spiritually awake. Be spiritually perceptive. Be vigilant in the spirit. Because the devil roams around like a roaring lion seeking who to devour. Alright, guys, so... Be leery, guys. Pray for each other. Share the gospel. Present the gospel the way that it that it, it is meant to be presented. Be led by the Holy Spirit to present the gospel. You know, uh, lead people to repentance. If the Lord leads you to baptize people, go ahead and baptize people. Be led by the Spirit at all times. All right, guys. So we're about to hit thirty minutes, guys. Again, go ahead and share this video with your friends. Let me know where you're watching from. Comment where you're watching from. Hit like, subscribe, hit that bell notification so that you can get notifications for when we go live. We upload videos, shorts, when we make posts. Um, all right, guys. So I'll catch you all later.